Welcome to the shop. I'm Jared and this is the Questionable Garage. And right next to us is the Car Wizard Ferrari 308 GTB. This was the car that Tavarsh used during the Ferrari special of Car Trek. And well, it did not perform its best. It had four carburetors, not just one. It had a total of four set up and normally they can work pretty well. But if you get built too extreme of an engine, too much camshaft, there's just not practicality of tuning them, especially if you only have $30 of parts off eBay to make them work. So shortly after filming Car Trek, David, Car Wizard, bought this from Tavarsh and started fixing it up. He's got the interior looking amazing and he installed a new fuel injection system that really has no support. So he reached out to me saying, hey, can you help out? And I had a better idea. Rather than work with what he's got that could be made to work, let's put the very best that we could. We've got a new Holly HP ECU to run the fuel injection. We've rewired the whole car. We're now running it on what's called sequential ignition and fueling instead of batch fire. It's just, we've gone way over the top for what we need to, for how simple this engine really relatively is. But isn't that what we do? We go like way over the top. And if you remember in the last Ferrari episode, there's a couple things to address. One, well, one, I, I kind of answered it in the last Porsche video where we went ahead, started it up. All right, neutral. It's running. Now I did have to go through and tweak a couple things. Obviously the, a universal table needs some adjustment, but we had it running a Ferrari on base maps. Like that's, it's an incredible thing. And that's one of the favorite things. I saw a lot of comments were saying, oh, you should have done this computer or a different brand computer. What I really like about Holly is they're trying to make fuel injection approachable to everyone. It's the guys that bolt on carburetors. It's they're trying to make it so if all you're doing is bolting on a carburetor and reading instructions, you'll be able to get your car running on fuel injection if it's supported. You, if you have some knowledge, you'll get it figured out on a Ferrari too. We have got all the little tiny button up things. We got air cleaners on it. We've got the wiring mounted up, but it is now time to dyno tune it. We're gonna strap this thing onto a dyno. 200 horsepower, 220 horsepower. I don't know. Our ultimate goal isn't necessarily a big, huge peak power number. We just want the thing to run and drive so it can, you know, look all the, the part of uh, Magnum PI, right? So comment below how much horsepower you think this thing's gonna make. I would love for it to beat a new Camry. That was the whole premise, Ferraris for a Camry. So hopefully maybe we can get there, but I'm not sure. Uh, but what I am sure of is I've got to get this on the trailer because I've got a long drive ahead of me. I'm heading south to uh, see a friend down in Florida we've not seen in a really long time. And uh, we're gonna get this thing tuned. So maybe cue just one last little engine you know, montage and uh, then driving time lapse. Well, we are in Florida. Florida is still incredibly hot and we are here with Ke Oh, here, let's let the camera adjust. There we go. Oh, now we yeah, can see yeah. you. There I am. Hey, Kevin, KSR Performance. Yep, yep. Here we are. And you brought me a Ferrari. I did. Well, I don't tune Ferraris. But, but you like, tune Hollies. Yes, I do. So. And I, I poised this. I said, hey, I've got something interesting. Do you want to take a look? And yeah, I knew it was like a, you know, exciting enough worm that you were going to grab the hook. Yeah, there's there's that side of me that's like, ooh, something new. Let's uh, <laughs> let's see what we can do with this. All right, just real quick. Some of you may not know what a dyno is. You've heard the term, we're gonna go to the dyno and uh, run it on the dyno. 
but you've never actually seen the process. So Kevin's been getting this loaded up. He's got an above ground dyno. A lot of places you'll see this part of it buried in the ground so the car sits level. I prefer the raised and elevated versions because if you need to do anything underneath the car, if there's any tweaks, any problems, you can easily get underneath and address them. It also makes strapping the car down as you know easy as possible. So if we come over here, you can see a raised drop that the tires are sitting on. These are also known as rolling roads. And what they are is they allow us to simulate a load on the car. We're able to put the car and accelerate full throttle without going anywhere. And what that really helps with when you're tuning and calibrating an engine, telling it how to run, we're able to run it through a very a number of conditions and load cycles so we can make sure to tune it and give the optimum drivability or peak power in the safest way possible. Now, again, you can tell on the back, we've got the chassis. Kevin's got it running to the subframe and we're firmly mounted into the cage and the chassis of the dyno. So the car is going to sit put. He's going to be able to go full throttle repeatedly and get it running perfect. Now, a lot of people like to measure horsepower and use these as their horsepower measuring tool. But how reliable are dynos? They're just good for bragging when it comes to horsepower, right? Yeah, so a dyno is really just a tool. Yeah. Like, basically it's, you know, as long as your dyno consistently measures the horsepower to itself, you know, whatever car you've got on there that day, like comparing numbers across different dynos, that's, that's not a smart thing to do because every dyno reads a little bit differently. The correction factor may be a little bit different because of the weather, you know, conditions like it's 95 degrees and 80% humidity today. So we're sweat like crazy. But uh, now like Mustang dynos are, can be the most consistent, but they're also the easiest to cheat on. You can go in, change two numbers and make this car make read 1800 horsepower. Yeah, cause you're like, you actually, it's got user input available for the correction factor. This roller weighs a predetermined amount and it's heavy. So all we're doing is gonna be accelerating this mass and then that's how the numbers are calculated. So it has a wheel speed sensor, or drum speed sensor and it's physics. That's why I always told people when I ran the shop, dyno sheets are nice, go to the drag strip, do a 60 to 130, yep. something like that because that's physics. You can't change that. There's science that says your car weighs this, you accelerated this distance, it takes this amount of power to do that. What we're do, using this car today is we don't have to be on the street. Yep. And then when we do want to go make wide open throttle bulls, we're in a safe spot. You know, we're out there. It's controlled. And, that, yeah, and that's yep. what I was explaining. The big benefits of a dyno is it's controlled and safe. Kevin is going to download, take a look at that map. We still need to do our wardrobe change so we can make sure we are properly calibrating the car. And uh, hopefully Kevin doesn't like shriek too much when he looks at my map. Uh, yeah, it's gotta be close. That's a good thing to start with, something that runs. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Feeling the part now. I, I look fantastic too. We had it to the proper Tom Selig button, but realized we want to try to get our videos monetized. So, yeah, should, should be like, really? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, off camera, we've been working a little bit because it's some of those just not yeah. a lot is happening, but a lot is happening. Yeah, so just little things like TPS sensor adjustment, like making sure that was right. Um, we centered the crankshaft sensor on the trigger wheel. Because the trigger wheel for this, uh, I guess that other system you use, it's very, very thin. So if you're off center, like say your, your crankshaft trigger wheel is there and you're off center a little bit, well, it's not the yeah. greatest reading. <laughs> you yep. discovered uh, idle air control motor wasn't working at all. Yep. So you said you used a universal multi-port fuel injection harness to start with, which is fine but then you use an LS IAC motor. The IAC motors between the LS and the Mopar, I guess it's 
the later model Hemis, they look exactly the same. Same plug, same everything. But their wired two pins are different. The A and C pins are wired differently. And if you mix and match, then neither one of them works. Yeah. So I noticed when we first had it running, the idle air control motor wasn't doing anything. So we got that fixed. So now it cranks up and actually uses the idle air control motor to help catch it uh, from a saw. I'm pretty happy that it idled as well as it did. Yeah. Not on the idle air. So I got a lot of little things yeah. right, but there, there's always, especially in this custom of an application, there's yeah. gonna be things, yeah. so. Yeah, uh, so I mean, I think we're about ready for some pulls now. Yeah. I gotta ask it, one to 10, the amount of little headaches, how did I do? Oh, it was like minimal. Like most so, of the time somebody brings us a car, it's ready to be tuned. No, it's not. <laughs> like there's always, and I know that sounds like you think you get everything right. And even like, even uh, when we're doing stuff for ourselves, like you make a little mistake on something, leave something mm -hmm. unhooked and like it doesn't work. But, so I think we've gone through and fixed most of that yep. little stuff. Now we'll see. Yep. How it does, see How if it, it does. revs, because yep. we haven't really revved it up much over like 4,500, just kind of like free revving it. That's exciting. Yeah, so. we'll make a pull to, you know, 5,500 yep. and see if it'll rev to 5,500. <laughs> make and, sure things stay in it. Yeah, do you have any idea what gear is closest to one, like what's the final drive ratio in this thing? No like, clue, but I would guess probably fourth, like okay. most five speeds fourth is your... Yeah. Let's so. try it in third gear. First, first yeah, time. less load. Yeah, yeah, we'll go through third gear just to see how it likes, and then, yeah, and then we'll figure out from there. Ready? Ready. 118, that's our first number. First number? 118. Yeah. So 155, 55 for 50. Okay. Definitely bucket for that. enough to actually push the, the lift board. 148.7. Not bad. Still, still climbing like crazy too. So. I mean, this does have a big cam. Or four big cams in it. So. That's a lot of I mean, it's still climbing like crazy. Which will, I mean, it'll definitely go probably 160, 170. We'll see how far it wants to go. But yeah, now we get to play with timing and all the other things. Fueling and see what it likes we're going up from there that's the reality of the dyno sessions there's just a ton of tinkering 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 your first two or three poles are relatively soft and there's lots of tinkering in between every one of those and then finally there's one or two glory poles at the very end that sounds about right yep that's accurate now one of the things we're talking about when we're trying to decide a rev limit for an engine is when power starts basically laying over, rolling over, where you're not really gaining much for the RPM. And if we look, our green line, it is still on an upward trajectory, which means we probably will see 7,500-ish on, on the red line. It's, yeah, it's gonna want 7,500, I think, for the ship, so. But we're, we're just gonna slowly work on it. Um, and this is where I say, don't worry about this number. At the end of the day, it would be nice to have a number. Some of the guesses in the Car Trek chat, that would be a two and we would be where everyone thought it was going to be. Yeah. If so, it doesn't drive, it doesn't matter how much horsepower it makes. Yeah, and I know like one of my like baselines for, okay, the car's doing pretty well, has always been one horsepower per cubic inch at the wheels. So this thing's 180 something cubic inches. We're already getting kind of close to that one horsepower per cubic inch at the wheels really refined engines will make one you know one and a half horsepower per cubic inch at the wheels you're but, not saying a 70s ferrari engine is the pinnacle of refinement i mean they've come a long way since the 70s you know modern ferraris are pretty awesome so which i mean even this thing's pretty awesome damn it but it makes a glorious sound yeah it does sound really good so it's just a matter of again do a pull we try a little bit this is relatively new ground as far as being sequential 
and having so much control over the timing and every, most of the people who have done some level of fuel injection have kept the distributors and other things. So we just have a lot more control and we'll just have to find what it likes. And ultimately, again, we want it to drive good so uh, David can go out and enjoy some drives and it not be broken all the time. And I feel like we're on our way. Yeah, this is running good now and like respond to so when we make changes. So pretty happy with yeah. all that. And hopefully, we'll just see if we can get close to it too. Maybe. Yeah, I'll say I'm gonna lean it out a little bit because a lot of times smaller edges don't like being lean and are going like being rich. And then it's also, you know, we've got sequential fuel ejection now and individual coils. So the cylinders should be fairly equal and the individual throttle body. So I'm gonna try leaning it out to closer to 13 to one on the Holly near fuel. With and uh, we'll see what it is. No matter what, we, we look fantastic. We do look fantastic. We have these shirts. I mean, Ollie hit it out of the park. As we continue to make pulls, one thing we're running into is really high intake air temperatures, which you really can't get away with on a rear-mounted engine, especially in most dyno cells. All of your air is coming to the front, it gets warmed up. So we've got a couple extra fans trying to get air in. One thing Kevin and I are also curious about is how much power do we potentially lose to the air box? It's got a very small swivel on the side, it's got a surge plenum but it's possibly a little restrictive. And as we're kind of working through settings, we lost timing sync uh, just before 7,000 RPM. So we're gonna look at a couple things. One thing we might just be struggling with is that trigger wheel is yeah, very narrow. Very narrow, but I mean, if it loses sync at say 72, but it makes peak power at 76, we don't really need to be up there at 72 anyway. Right, so. or 66. Yeah, 66. Yeah, so we're we're seeing it start to taper off around 6,600 RPM. So we're gonna just do a little more twe uh, tweaking, checking, monitoring. Again, ultimately, the car needs to run good. Big, huge power numbers are fun, but they they really don't matter at the end of the day. As long as we can drive the car, or David and Jenny can drive the car and have fun, that's the ultimate goal of all of this. And we may just have like the most complicated. EFI setup ever for a sub 200 horsepower engine. Yeah, I mean, it'll make it run really good, so. I mean, the processing power, we have the technology. We yeah. just don't have the mechanical side of things. <laughs> So we've been finding some interesting things as we're researching this engine, right? Namely, the reported power numbers appear to be very Ferrari-esque. We've seen everything from 260 down to, what did you, uh, 202? Yeah, 202 is what I saw for a naturally aspirated 3 liter 
where it's actually 2.93 liters. Yeah. But we figure that was with a fresh engine, which it sounds like making excuses, but. Yeah. We figure that's at the flywheel. You figure probably 15 to 18% drivetrain loss with it, what it's like in the 165 to 170 range, or we're seem to be about as stuck in few. Yeah. Or at 160. Yeah, not quite. So we're pretty yeah. much there. I've moved the air fuel around a little bit. I've moved like some other stuff and moved the air fuel, moved the timing, and it's kind of just. That, that is what it wants to make. So we could try a fourth gear pull, but before we do that, we both are very suspect of that hair box. Yeah. So, I'm very curious to see what happens if we take the lid off because air doesn't like to make sharp turns. And so a sharp if, turn in like a quarter inch area. Yeah, so if, if the lid, or if the top of the throttle body is there and the lid is here, well then air is trying to like yeah. make that really sharp turn and maybe that's where some of the horse matter is going. So I'm going to pop this off real quick while Kevin does a couple more changes and looks through our fancy data logs there. Any secret data or no? No. The car's never run this state, so. It's, it's so smooth in here, like. Like, it just seems like there's a sewing machine running behind me. I mean, it's just, like, buttery smooth, like, I guess, Black Lane Craig V8, but just how they do that. You just got Tavares really excited. That's that's his keyword. Oh, yeah? What, the Black Lane? The Black Lane Craig. Black Lane, right? <laughs> and this is what we were talking about. That raises up not even quite three-quarters of an inch above this level, and these horns are almost level with that, so there's less than three-quarters of an inch for air to come in, go through this filter, and then make those turns in. Now these horns actually will help with airflow. They're they're shown to, you know, it'll help it pull the hair in, but this is gonna be our best case for peak power, right? Yeah, it should be. 200. I don't know if it'll gain that much, but I would expect it to gain something. The, like it should be a noticeable difference in the dyne. Aren't you supposed to just hit the plus key a bunch of times? Yeah, the up arrow doesn't work very good, but there's no turbos. And you know, I like turbos, yeah. you know. Everything needs a turbo. Everything does need a turbo. T-shirt available, we will KSR.com. <laughs> Custom air cleaner mod, ready to go. Oh, <laughs> my towers. Wait, what about this? Sounded like power. Sounded better. What's the verdict? Come on, computer. Holy crap. Holy cow. What's 77? Uh, Airbox is a restriction. 10% on yeah. the money, pretty much. 10%. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's unreal. And what's it out there? So one. 177. 20 horsepower. 20 horsepower. At the very 20. Top. And you feel 20 horsepower. You oh, don't feel yeah. four. Well, you. 10%, that's more than 10% horsepower. Like, yeah, that's that's something. I mean, that, you can hear it. Like, it just sounded wonderful. But it felt better in the car, too. <laughs> like, just everything. David, you need to get rid of the air cleaner. As we go and keep making pulls, we're running into that issue of a high RPM sink loss. What that basically means is as the engine was turning faster and faster, the engine wasn't getting a perfect crank and cam signal. It didn't know 100% where it was, so whenever that happens, it basically will stop fuel and ignition so you don't break things. And we were trying to close the air gap and open the air gap, and then Kevin had the idea that uh, the valleys, the teeth, weren't very big on that wheel. Yeah, it's like the tooth is, you know, not tall at all, so the sensor isn't seeing the signal really go away. Because we That's were... my yeah. theory, anyways. <laughs> well, and there are two different types of sensors. The VR sensor, which is basically, it creates a voltage and Hall effect, yep. which creates a nice square wave. 
and the interest of doing everything super modern we put the really nice super modern sensor on it and the not so modern trigger wheel design required us to put the dumb sensor back on. Yeah, and it seemed it pulled clean to 7,500, so all that yep. seems pretty happy there. Not too far from being able to take this thing out on the street just to verify it's snappy there. And that it runs and drives and. Send you back on your way home. Let's see how she drives. You, you fit a little bit better than I do. Yeah, I feel like the steering wheel is still a little too far away. I will say this it is already driving. Drives better than she did before? Oh, but between the carbs, between the first fuel injection. Yeah, the gears are actually really short. So it's got such a fine window of um, the map sensor, like cruising is say, you know, in the mid to upper 80s in KPA but then wide open is like 90, you know, like 96 to 98 KPA. And with most cars, it's cruising is typically in like the 50s for KPA. So you got a big, huge window of, of uh, tuning. And like, so basically what it's trying to do is when we're light accelerating, you hear that little blah, 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 blah right there. So it's trying to overlap the tunes or the parts of the map where we're wide open versus um, versus where it is when it's uh, cruising. All the history I've had with this car, it is, it is so far beyond improved. Better than it was? Perfect. <laughs> like it's not even in the same scale ever of where it was. Well, we've made it back. We did. Uh, it looks and sounds amazing going down the road. It is never in all of its existence within the YouTube sphere driven anything like that. Okay, so, good. I uh, mean, I still see some things I want to make better, but that's just me. But that, that's I, the perfectionist, and that is why I came down to Gainesville. You guys can take it, drive it, maybe send me some data logs if it does anything weird, and I can make some tweaks in the tune and send you back something to try. But yeah, it's all in all, I felt like it did pretty good there and you guys got to hear the flyby i haven't heard the flyby oh yet, it, it's it's great it needs a brake caliper a little yep. bit of oil leaks fixed and uh yep, yep. david needs to put the the trunk lid back on it and then and it's, like modify the airbox it needs something modified with the airbox to make all the horsepower a lot like it you're giving up 20 horsepower yeah and that's a lot in something like this if you head over to the ksr performance youtube channel you're going to see yep. a little bit more technical dive i tend to get pretty technical Kevin gets way more technical and you see all the in-between yep. polls on his channel. So you'll get twice the amount of Ferrari. Big thank you to Holly for jumping on board and supporting us. Um, that is way more EFI than 180 horsepower needs, but it drives phenomenal. You have really nice engine management now, which should provide you the driving results that we just had when we took it on the test track. Exactly. So, so again, huge thank you. Check them out. Uh, KSR Performance on Instagram. You yep, said Instagram, TikTok. Instagram, Facebook, a little bit on TikTok, and then for sure YouTube. Yep. But, you know, a lot of our shop builds as well as some different racing here and there. Like I'm a crew chief in the Trans Am series and then won a couple of the Cletus and Cars uh, circle track events. Mm -hmm. So got some more of those coming up which we're excited about and i think you're going to be in the burnout contest at bristol yep. right yeah we're bringing i was there with the bmw we're bringing the big block powered car this time around oh, and right. uh cool we're gonna have a whole lot of fun sounds so, like a plan awesome again thank you cool. thank you guys for watching and hanging out at us always i'm jared reminding you guys to always make questionable choices actually we're gonna stop that outro in progress because well, I was really tired. Um, I had driven down the day before, late in the afternoon, slept a little bit. We were in a hot dino shop all afternoon and I had to drive all the way back to Georgia that night. So we're into the next day. And I just, I wanted to go over a couple things, address the car, the horsepower, everything. And also just kind of give one more big thank you for Kevin and KSR. We were paying customers down there. He, he's, 
when it came time to run this on the dyno, he is as just particular as I am when it comes to things, and I knew he was the perfect person to work with to get this dialed in. So thank you, Kevin. Again, if you aren't following him, you should. I try to give you tech light, and he goes into really exciting detail that I enjoy watching um, and learning from. So the big thing I just kind of wanted to address, because we didn't really talk the final power number, 180 horsepower to the wheels. We were dragging a brake caliper, nothing we can do to change that, but the car's running fantastic. Am I disappointed with that power number? Not at all. Ferrari is not the most reliable when it comes to releasing horsepower. And we found anything from 202 to 260 crank horsepower. If we go to that 202 number, we're exactly where it should be. Kevin's theory again is roughly one horsepower per cubic inch on a naturally aspirated motor to the ground. That's exactly where we're at. So this is a very healthy, happy running engine. The main thing is when we took it on that drive, aside from its you know, oil leak that decided to come back, had nothing to do with the Holly stuff, um, it drove amazing. Having ridden in it in all of its forms, the carbureted form, the, the, the Tech 3, and now the Holly, this thing runs fantastic. It is going to be a great driver. It's going to look fantastic. It's going to make a ton of amazing and fun noises. So I am I am thrilled with that. I am incredibly impressed with the Holly. I want to address a lot of comments are saying, why didn't we use a fuel tech? Why didn't we use Haltech? So th there's a ton of you know computers out there. I'm a big fan of a computer that most anyone with an EFI knowledge can sit down and make work incredibly quickly. And I have personally found very consistently with what I have worked with, Holly is generally the most user friendly. It is designed for people who aren't necessarily super tech savvy. Look at the Holly. We're running a 1978 Ferrari with it. I appreciate you guys as always. I hope you appreciated uh, hearing all the fantastic noises that this car made while we were uh, unleashing 180 horsepower. I hope this has inspired you to uh, get out and work on your project, do something really cool and unusual, or just get it running, have some fun, wrench on your car, and uh, Thank you guys for watching and hanging out as always. I'm Jared reminding you guys to always make questionable choices, even when it comes to fashion. <laughs> Although that, that, that's not questionable at all. <laughs> I might wear this out tonight, you know. <laughs> I am single, so, you know, see if we can fix it. <laughs> <laughs> see.